I'm Ashton Marcus, and I'm on location at Chance Theater for the Southern California premiere of After the Revolution. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you're? Marina Mitchelson. I played Emma. I was born in Israel. I moved to the States when I was three. Um, my parents are Soviet immigrants, so we moved to Los Angeles when I was three years old. That's where I was raised. I moved to New York when I was 17. I went to NYU, studied theater over there, started working in um, theater and in film out there, started making my own films, and decided to move out here to LA, where I opened up a cafe and dance studio with my family called Paper Plastic Cafe and started pursuing uh, theater and acting and writing and producing out here. Yes. Okay, and which character did you play? I played Emma Joseph. And could I have a brief synopsis of that character? Emma is a young idealist who has just graduated law school uh, and she's really set out to change the world with this legal fund that she's created named after her grandfather, Joe Joseph, who famously, uh, supposedly, pled the fifth and didn't name names during the McCarthy era. Um, so she's an idealist who has set her life to kind of imitate her grandfather and you know seek justice in the world. What did you get out of the play? Wow, this has been a great experience for me. I was actually familiar with the play before I was cast in it and have read it uh, and thought about it a lot. Um, but from working on it, I learned and understood the play way more than I had when I read it. When I read it, I thought it was a play about a, it's just a play about a family, but I didn't understand the gravity of uh, the news and the discovery to Emma's life uh, and the way her idealism changed. You know, by playing it, I understood where exactly she was in her life uh, in terms of graduating from school and coming out thinking, you know, the world is, everything in the world is either right or wrong and I'm going to go get them and fix it. Uh, and through the course of working on this play, I learned that what she's going through is this thing that we all must have gone through, I just don't know when exactly, where you learn that the world is made of much more gray matter than it is black or white. Um, and, you know, disillusionment and the breaking down of your youthful ideals is part of growing up. Yeah, well, another point I was trying to, to, to get you to comment on was uh, that in theater they deal with so many topics that you never see ever being seen in mainstream films. Like in this particular case, you see about Marx, no one would ever do a, a film about Marx and right. expect it to make any money. Right. I, I think some of what you say is true. I think it's it's hard to say. I think about maybe about the Hollywood part is right because of course everyone knows that Hollywood's only making sequels and big budget. Um, I, as a film lover myself, I don't want to say that about the entire film community because I imagine that there are artists out there who would, with it, you know, voraciously tackle the subject matter. But the nuance that theater uh, is is allowed to bring to a, a piece like this is definitely unusual. And not only Marxism, but you know, politics and ideals and listening and different opinions and different opinions between generations. You know, history is definitely a different, difficult topic to tackle um, in in this kind of art form. And I agree with you that it would be very difficult to do in a film. Actually, in Hollywood in particular too, because there was a blacklisting in Hollywood, in which a lot of actors, famous actors, would yeah. no longer be able to act anymore. Almost all of them went to the theater, and during the 1960s was actually the peak of theater because all the writers and the mm -hmm. actors went into theater, and it was a golden age for theater. Yeah, of course, I know. Arthur Miller famously wrote a play about it. Uh, Eli Kazan also on the waterfront, and they're all about this. And, and there's a lot of I know a lot of writers. Who was it? Was it Deshiel Hammett? So, you know, came out of that era and ended up going, having to hide basically in the theater community because they were blacklisted and no longer got work. Um, I think it's awesome that this play sheds light on that and uh, sheds light on how we perceive other people and how we um, label them for their opinions, especially in this day and age where everyone's, you know, everyone's left or right, everyone's Republican or Democrat, and especially going into uh, an election year where, you know, that's all we're already hearing about on the news. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm
Hi. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you're? Uh, Rob Ferran, a company member here with the Chance Theater. I started acting in my mid-20s, um, attended the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, started a theater company with some friends, took a very long break from acting uh, to be a husband and father, uh, came back a few years ago, and I was very lucky to find the Chance Theater, uh, and I've done several productions here, uh, Laramie Project, uh, Passion Play, Reindeer Monologues, and now After the Revolution, and uh, just recently was asked to be a company a resident artist uh, company member here with the uh, Chance Theater, so uh, very, very excited to be here. Uh, I played Ben Joseph. Ben is a uh, Marxist. He is a uh, passionate man. His uh, personality runs to extremes, uh, extremely happy, extremely sad, extremely angry, extremely compassionate. Uh, he is a uh, school teacher, and he uh, carries the torch of the legacy of his father and his uh, pride in his father uh, uh, into all of his work and all of his teachings, and uh, he engages his Marxist philosophy in his family, in his friends, in his work, and in everything he does. I, was, I actually enjoyed this a lot. The, the play was very intellectual. Yes, definitely. There's a, uh, a it's it's very layered. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful humor and a lot of great uh, intensity, and so it's very much a slice of life, you know. Um, and it's definitely intellectual. You have to you have to keep pace with it. You have to kind of follow what's going on. There's information there. There's a lot of factual information, but it's uh, that factual information is kind of funneled through these characters and their families set up um, uh, so yeah it, it but it will definitely make you think for sure right, well thank you very much for being on the show not at all my pleasure thank you for having me hi my name is Ashton Marcus I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine and you're I'm Karen Webster I've been a company member here at the chance since 2003 this is uh, my 15th year here at the chance and um, I'm a registered dental hygienist by day so this is my home I played the character of Mel uh, Mel is the wife of uh, one of the lead characters, Ben, uh, the second generation. It's a three-generation play, and so um, she is actually Emma's stepmother, the lead character's stepmother. They've been together about 15 years, and Mel is the mediator of the family. She tries to keep the family together, and they kind of take sides. She's always trying to bring the family back together. So what do you think of the play? I love this play. I think it's really well written. It's um, it's about family. It's about family connections. There's political undertones, but that's not the main thing of that play. That's just what the family is united about, but it also is what breaks them apart. So um, it's about, I think everybody can relate to the, the family dynamic in some way. It's one character. It could be your father. It could be your sister. It could be, um, there's one character in the play referred to as Kathy, and every family has a Kathy. You know, Kathy just doesn't do well. You know, so um, that's what I love about the play. It's about family, and I think we can all relate to it. All right, well, thank you very much for being on the show. You're very welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm on KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you are? I'm Corky Lupe. This is my third show at the Chance Theater. I worked at, you know, in Orange County in LA primarily on stage. Um, I'm you know, kind of back after a relatively lengthy hiatus, so it's fun to be back. I'm, it's great to be working at the Chance. I can't think of a better place to work. It's, um, you know, I, I, I just love working here so much and with the creative people here and it's, it's just, it's, it's an honor. So that's, that's about as interesting as I get, I guess. So. I played Leo Joseph. Leo Joseph is the older brother of Ben, who's kind of the the the, the story between the relationship between Ben and Emma, the two the two main characters in the story. And Leo is the older brother, the uncle to Emma, who is um, who's a little bit more like a peacemaker of the family when this family is dealing with a crisis. Uh, Leo comes in and and tries to negotiate um, uh, a more realistic. Uh, tactic on how to deal with this family crisis that's that's occurring with this family. So what do you think of the play? I, when I first read this play, I I knew that I wanted to to do it, and it's 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 a family uh, 
it's a family story. It's it's not it's not a story that is um, particularly easy to to describe in in a couple catchphrases. It's a very nuanced story of a very intelligent family, a very um, passionate, politically driven family, and a very loving family um, who are dealing with a with with a family secret that is eventually come to to light, and they're dealing with the um, the 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 reconciliation of of truth and and the consequences of 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 maintaining a lie. So. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. I appreciate you asking me. Um, thank you very much. My name is Ashton Marks. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. And you are? I am Kathy McCaleb. I've been doing this acting thing the second time around for about seven years now. I did 10 years of theater when I was younger up in the Monterey Bay area. And I'm absolutely loving it. I do a lot of commercials. I am now the um, life alert pendant lady on TV. So when you see somebody clicking the button or falling down the stairs, that's me. <laughs> I play the character of Vera. I'm the matriarch of this Marxist family. Um, Vera um, fell in love with a man who was involved in the McCarthy hearings and was blacklisted. And they both were very strong Marxists, very, very strong Marxists, and they had to live with the aftermath of his being blacklisted, of having the phone tapped. And, and through it all, she never lost her belief in that pure form of Marxism. She's got mixed feelings about Stalin, but that pure form of Marxism, she very staunchly believes in it and thinks that that is what's going to come in the future. I mean, it's called After the Revolution. So this is, this is Emma's revolution, but it's not Vera's revolution. She's still waiting for the real thing. I'm always impressed with theater on the, on the depth of all the... Uh the work because you never see something like this uh, done in Hollywood. No, I don't think you would. This is a thinking person's play. I think we had a wonderful, wonderful dramaturg who brought us a lot of background material on the Marxist Party and what they did in America and how active they were and what a positive part they were in um, working for the destitute and working for equality of the races in the 20s and the 30s. And it wasn't until the war and we found out what Stalin was doing that it just totally disappeared, practically disappeared in America. But yeah, it's a thinking person's play. Actually, are you familiar with uh, the way uh, the blacklisting affected theater? I know that it got many, many important entertainers like Charlie Chaplin. I mean, he was a comedian for Pete's sakes. But yeah, and, and I, I still do not understand why the entertainment people were chosen to be blacklisted unless he felt that it was because they could influence people by their work. And he did not want that influence. That's the only thing I could think of. You know, my father, I remember the only thing my father ever said was he thought McCarthyism was necessary because he said there were communists everywhere in the government and they did have to be rooted out. He, t he spoke totally out of fear-based after being a, a person in the Navy in World War II. Seeing as you have so much experience in, I guess, commercials and the theater, do you have any advice for my uh, audience? A lot of them are in community theater. Always do your best. Look at the quality of the community theater you're doing. Look at their reviews. Look at the types of shows they do. Look at their directors. Look at everything. And whatever you do, every role you take, try and learn something new from it. That's what you have to do. I worked 10 years at a, it was supposed to be a community theater, but they went to all the cattle calls and brought in a repertory theater. They brought in a couple of equity people for each show. You know, it was wonderful training, 10 years of training, three, three shows a summer. And that's where I got my training. And also, take classes. Take classes. <laughs> all right, thank you very much for being on the show. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you're? Uh, Andrew Puente. I play Miguel in uh, After the Revolution at the Chance Theater. I am currently a student, actually, still at Cal State University Long Beach. I'm in my last semester. I'm going to be graduating this year. I'm studying theater. Um, after I graduate, or, yeah, after I graduate, I'm planning on uh, taking a year off and applying for grad schools at probably around at UCI. Um, I got into acting when I was about... 
17 when I was in high school. I just did a, a play and I fell in love with it. I quit. I was doing sports up until then and I quit, you know, football and track and I started doing theater full time. And, um, and yeah, it's great. I love, I love being an actor and this is my second show with The Chance and I love working here. Like there's a, a great kind of family community in the theater, like not just with the cast, but also with um, uh, the front of house staff and with the artistic director with On, who's our director, who's fantastic and he's amazing. Um, and everybody who's involved here is just, they're, they're just so welcoming. And once you're a part of this family, it's definitely, it feels like something that you can be a part of for a long time. I played Miguel. Miguel is the leading lady's boyfriend. He is so, he is a recent law school graduate and he is, uh, the I guess you could say, the charming, uh, supportive boyfriend who's just trying to be as helpful as he can uh, and at the same time try to keep as much as he's the carrot in this relationship, he also wants to be the stick and kind of reminder of like, hey, like there's other things going on in your life that you need to pay attention to. Um, and so without giving away too much, it's kind of like a, just he's he's sort of her guy. He's he's, he's attempting to be her guide, um, despite the fact that she doesn't, I don't think she necessarily needs one. Yeah. So what do you think of the play, the message behind it? I think that the message of the play is, well, I mean, it depends on which message, because there's definitely a lot of um, things that people can take away from it, whether they're looking at it from a political perspective or they're looking at it from uh, the familial perspective and thinking about in terms of how they relate to family and how, or how they relate to their own family or how families can have disagreements despite the fact that they agree on so many things that it's just the minutia that makes them kind of separate, but that at the end there's still that love and there's still that connection that kind of brings us back together. And I think that that's the biggest message for me and I obviously am a very big supporter of that idea because I mean I feel like everybody has those problems where you know there's things that can separate families as big issues that can separate people but you know bring it, being in such a close relationship with people just kind of brings you back together even despite those big differences yeah thank you very much for being on the show thank you yeah Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine. And you are? I'm David Carl Goldbeck, uh, graduate of UCI, yeah. alumni, class okay. of 81. Spent a few years at South Coast Rep. Um, went on to make a living with the Walt Disney Company, and uh, I'm starting to get back into the theater and enjoying the heck out of it. A lot of fun. And which character did you play? I played Morty. Morty is a friend of the family, uh, an acquaintance, and uh, ultimately a benefactor of uh, the Joe Joseph Fund that Emma, the lead character, has uh, started and administers uh, to defend uh, Mumia Abu Jamal and uh, similar cases along the way. What did you take from this play? Uh, it's uh, your perspective on life um, changes with every with every minute. Um, you know, you can go along, you know, for years and years believing one thing, the way that that you look at things and uh, suddenly something can happen and in an instant everything's turned on its head and you really have to uh, take the time to really think about how that affects what you how you think what your perspective is yeah. you have a lot of experience in acting uh, can you give any advice to some of my uh, listeners oh boy I am not the one um, just stay with it um, if you love doing it if you like doing it um, just keep doing it um, uh, you know this is something that I've been away from for quite some time Time, and I've gotten back into it recently in the last couple of years and I really love doing it uh, something that I've I've kind of had to have inside myself fortunately I have the job right now that I'm in front of people and kind of doing presentations and tours and all that kind of stuff every almost every day so there's that in my life regularly um, and this is just a whole different aspect added on top of that yeah. well thank you very much for being on the show my pleasure thank you Hi, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you are? I'm Cameron Zellinger. I am originally from Orange County, California. I lived in New York for about six years after going to college, and I did national tours and uh, musical theater um, sort of all over the country, uh, but my, my life passion, I guess, was running a youth theater company, so I moved back here, started uh, teaching. I teach now at Orange County School of the Arts. I run my own youth education program, and I fulfill my love of the stage as much as I can outside of that. I played Jess. I played the 
the uh, main character, Emma's uh, sister. Jess is the oldest of the two, and she sort of went on her own pathway, um, not really understanding what she was supposed to think and feel about what um, the, her father's political views and her grandmother's political views and so, so on and so forth. And I think that she got stuck in not feeling anything for these for this certain subject and so she um, sort of went the bad way um, through uh, troubled times, been in, re in and out of rehab at least three or four times and sort of found herself um, through and, and almost following what her father wanted um, but just going a different way. Was this play a farce or was it a political commentary or was, or was it a drama? Um, I would say it was more of like a a, a drama with some comedic moments. Um, it definitely touches on um, social and political views uh, and written sort of not autobiographical but very much so on the playwright's life. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much. I was happy to be here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashton Marcus with KUCI, 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you are? Ah Nguyen, I'm the uh, artistic director of The Chance and director of um, tonight's production of After the Revolution by Amy Herzog. Great. Well, the play uh, is about this family, three generations of this family, who um, who have a character ha who has a member of their family who has been seen as a hero and a little secret comes out about him early on in the play and they all have to sort of deal with what that means to them as a family, what it means to them personally, um, how it divides them or how it reconnects them. So why did you choose to do this play? Uh, for all those reasons, but mainly because I think um, it's a really intelligent play, it's a very funny play, it really touches me, like I'm moved by it, I'm moved by how um, Herzog's ability to write um, this very personal play and yet at the same time it's about politics, it's about history, um, it's about communication. I'm always fast. I'm always fascinated with a theater and, and the depths that it will take you because you would never see something like this played in mainstream. I mean, a, a play about Marxism and actually the, the crowd enjoying it. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess at, it's radical. Uh, it's radical um, in a sense of how hard it is. How hard it is for this family who clearly love each other and yet um, they're they're their beliefs and their ideals and their politics um, make it so hard for them to listen to each other and to, to communicate with each other so you know I think right politics is is, uh, is difficult it's a difficult it's difficult for our, our audiences um, but I think if you listen it's 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 about more than that and I think it's um, it's and it's about listening, which is, I think, we need to uh, be reminded of more often. Yeah, I, I saw your bio. You're a very educated man. Really, my bio is here. I've been here since the beginning back in 1999, so I think we're in our 16th season, 17th season. I'm not even sure at this point. Um, I've been a producing associate at South Coast Repertory, which was an amazing experience, and I've directed other at other places, but this is really my home. This is what I do. Yeah. The when I heard the topic, I'm drawn back to basically when the blacklisting era itself, and I, I remember about the uh, the Hollywood actors being blacklisted. All of them went to the theater. That's when theater had its high point, its golden age, and it's also to the point where actually in the Equity Union there is actually a clause that says we will never have a blacklist. What do you think about that? It sounds amazing. Yeah, good for equity. Okay. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks, you, man. Okay. Thanks for being here. Yeah. After the Revolution will be playing at Chance Theatre from April 10th to May 10th. For more information, go to chancetheatre.com or theorangecurtainrev.com.